Hello, welcome to lesson one of how to make iPhone apps with no programming experience. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the tools and materials that you need to start building apps. I'm going to tell you about what these tools are, where you can find them, how they're going to be used in order to build an app, and finally, once you have your completed app, how are you going to publish it into the Apple App Store? Okay, now the only thing you really need is a Mac computer. Now at this point, all of the PC users will turn away, but before you do that, give me a couple of minutes. I'm going to tell you guys a solution that PC users can use. But first, let's talk about why we need a Mac. The reason is, the software that we use to build apps with only runs on Mac computers, specifically the Mac operating system. So the Mac computer that you get, whether you borrow from a friend or you buy it secondhand, just make sure that it can run the latest Mac operating system. If you're buying a secondhand Mac, this usually means that it's not more than, say, two years old. And if you're buying a brand new Mac, then even the lowest end Mac will suffice. And usually that is the Mac Mini. That's going to be fine for app development. Aside from a Mac computer, that's all you really need. The software I mentioned is free. You don't even need an iPhone or an iPad to develop apps for it, although they do come in handy when you want to test your app on an actual device. Another question I get often asked is if you can use an iPad or an iPhone for app development. And unfortunately, the answer is no, because that software I mentioned where we write our code in to build apps, it doesn't run on an iPad or an iPhone. It actually needs a Mac computer with the Mac operating system. Okay, so what is this magical software I'm talking about that we used to build apps with? Well, it's called Xcode and it's available for free in the Mac App Store. And if you get access to a Mac with the latest operating system, you're going to see an App Store installed. There's going to be an icon in the Applications folder where you can access kind of like an App Store that's on your iPad or on your iPhone where you can search for Xcode and you can download it for free. It is a pretty big download. Uh, it usually requires the latest operating system and about 4 gigs of free space. Okay, so for PC users or people who can't get access to a Mac, what's the solution there? Well, you could invest in a Mac or you can try out a service like MacInCloud.com, which allows you to rent a Mac and remotely log in to that Mac from your PC. And it's somewhere around a dollar an hour or $20 a month for unlimited usage. Keep in mind that these prices may have changed and I didn't go onto the website to verify them. But if you don't already have access to a Mac, it's still a pretty low cost investment to get your feet wet and get started and to see if app development is something that you want to pursue. So what's going to happen is that on your PC desktop, you're going to have a window of the Mac desktop and you're going to be able to access the Mac remotely through that. And when I checked out Mac and Cloud, one cool thing about it was that Xcode is already pre-installed on it and it was ready to go because a lot of app developers use Mac and Cloud for the purpose of building apps if they don't have a Mac or they can't get access to a Mac. I do want to warn you, however, because you are accessing the Mac remotely through the internet, there may be some lag depending on your internet connection and working through a remote desktop like that may be a little slower and more sluggish and generally not as good of an experience as if you were working off of an actual Mac in front of you. Okay, now that we covered the first two points, let's talk about how we're going to use Xcode to build apps. Now, if you think about an app, what it really boils down to are two things. Number one, the user interface, and this is what the user sees when they're holding the app on their phone or iPad. And the second thing is that when the user interacts with that user interface, there's some sort of response and there's some sort of logic that happens behind the scenes, which either navigates to another screen or changes the information presented on the screen. And I'm going to call that the logic and response, number two. So how Xcode helps you achieve those two things, it has a visual layout editor where you can build your app's user interface visually by dragging and dropping elements onto the screen. And secondly, it has a code editor that lets you wire up code to those elements so that when the user interacts with the user interface, the code that you write performs the logic and changes the layout. And that's where the programming part of things comes in. And lastly, Xcode also has an iOS device simulator. It has an iPhone simulator and iPad simulator for all of the different 
uh, iPhones and iPads that are available. So you can test your app on the simulator without actually needing or plugging in an actual device. And what's going to happen when you run your Xcode project is that you're going to see an image of the device pop up on your screen with your app running inside of it. And you can interact with it through that simulator using your mouse, just as if you were tapping on the device. So that's what Xcode is. Now the next thing that you have to learn in order to build apps is the Swift programming language. Now I mentioned in Xcode that you can write code to perform the logic and response when the user interacts with your user interface. Well, that code follows a certain set of rules and syntax, just like language, like French or English. And that programming language is called Swift. Now I just have to mention here that Swift isn't something that you have to download. You have to download Xcode from the Mac App Store, but Swift is just the language that you have to learn in order to write the code. So you don't have to do anything to get Swift or you don't have to download Swift or anything like that. Now learning how to code in Swift is usually the most intimidating part for people, but it's actually not that bad. Tons of people have gone through my tutorials and courses and successfully learned Swift and continue to build apps. Like with learning any brand new language, practice is key and having someone like myself to guide them through it also helps a lot. Okay, so now the last thing to cover is once that you have your app, how are you going to get it into the App Store? Well, Apple has a developer program that is a paid membership. It's $99 US a year. And what that allows you to do is to submit as many apps as you want into the App Store and offer your apps for sale or for free. One thing that's changed, however, is that whether or not you're part of this program, you can deploy your apps and deploy is just a fancy word for install. You can install your apps that you create onto your own device without signing up for this membership. In the past, you had to pay that yearly fee in order to even get your apps onto a real device, but that's not the case anymore. Aside from allowing you to submit apps into the App Store, it also gives you access to the latest Apple software before it gets officially released. So uh, you can access their beta software. That's another perk of the program. Okay, so I hope this lesson was useful for you to understand what tools we need and how we're gonna go about building apps. In the next lesson, I'm gonna get you started right away into running Xcode and dabbling in some Swift code. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.